Why do you wish to sail west? To open a new route to Asia. Asia is the richest kingdom, the land of spices and gold. At the moment, there are only two ways of reaching it. By sea, sailing around the African continent, the journey takes a year, or by land. But the Turks have closed this route to all Christians. There is a third way. By sailing west across the ocean sea. The distance is unknown. It's said to be infinite. Infinite. Superstition. I believe the Indies are no more than 750 leagues west of the Canary Islands. How can you be so certain? The calculations of uh, Toscanelli, Maradotti, Esdras. Esdras is a Jew. So what's worse? Two minutes. And already you're a dead man. For telling the truth? Yes. We are burning people for less. The men you're about to confront have no emotion. Shalom, shalom. This is the brother Yeshaya. I would like to give our honor, glory, and praise unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Akamadash. Double honors unto the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, the man I learned this truth from. Now, the, today's lesson is actually going to be a little bit on Gad. You know, just brief information I was able to pull out, you know, to the Spirit. Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. As you can tell by that video clip I just played, you know, uh, it was uh, a movie portraying how Christopher Columbus, you know, these people know, the people that rule in today's society understand that the, the, the true children of Israel are you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. And that, yes, there are speckled birds that may look like other nations that actually their forefathers go back to one of the 12 tribes of Jacob, which is Israel. And Israel in the, the holy tongue is Yasharala, meaning the uh, prince of power, you know, the sons of the Most High, in other words. So... I'm going to get straight into the precepts. This is going to be Genesis 49, verse 19. Gad, a troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at the last. And uh, Gad represents uh, the, the so-called Native Americans. You know, those are Gadites. You know, the, they're one of the 12 tribes of the, uh, of the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native, Native Americans, the Israelites. And they are actually uh, one of the considered of the lost 10 tribes. You know, because the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom had split up. And the scriptures prove this, and that's why that movie had made a reference to, to Ezra's. You know, the second Ezra's is the book that, that helped Christopher Columbus find uh, the Israelites, you know, in, in, in the Americas, you know, North America. You know, so I'll go ahead and pull that precept, precept out next. This is second Ezra's 13, starting at verse 40. There are the, those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Hosea, the king who Salomon, Salomon, Salmanazar, the king of Assyria, led away captive, you know, the Assyrian captivity that our people had went through. And he carried them over the waters, and so came they into another land. You know, so they carried them away captives. Verse 41. But they took this counsel among themselves, that they would leave the multitude of the heathen, so the, uh, the, the, the ten tribes, you know, the Gadites, you know, the rest of you, uh, the Native uh, Americans and so-called uh, so called Native Americans and Hispanics, Latinos, they took it among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen. The Most High had put that spirit on them. And this is what it says, and go forth into a further country where never man, man, mankind dwelt. You know, no one had ever lived in uh, North America. You know, in today's, uh, today's world that we know of, no one had dwelt here before. Verse 42, that they might there keep their statues, which they never kept in their own land. And they entered into Euphrates by the narrow places of the river. For the Most High, you know, Yahweh, then showed signs for them and held still the floods till they were passed over. For through that country, there was a great way to go, namely of a year and a half. And the same region is called Arzareth, which is really America. You know, that's America in today's times. And the Most High had allowed them to go to it there. You know, he, he showed them signs. He held still the flood, you know, till they passed over. And, you know, he, he made things 
accessible for them because this is prophecy. And Christopher Columbus knew of this prophecy. He knew that, that, that the, there were people already here, you know, in a land that no, no man has ever dwelt. You know, even in that video description or that video clip I just played in the beginning, he said, you know, that to travel there, you know, it's said to be infinite, you know, because no one's ever traveled really like that. It was really, you know, a, a place I believe the Hamites had, you know, maybe it came and, you know, went, but no one ever dwelt here, you know. So the next precept I do have to show whenever they uh, they split is going to be a First Kings. Uh, I'm going to show mainly. I'm going to focus on First Kings 11 and 31 and 32. So I'm going to go ahead and read. And he said to Jeroboam, "Take thee ten pieces, for thus saith Yahweh, the power of Israel: Behold, I will rend the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon, and I will give and will give ten tribes to thee." So that the heavenly Father had split the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. You know, the southern kingdom representing the so-called Negro and the, the uh, northern kingdom representing the so-called Latino and Native American. So the Heavenly Father decided to give Jeroboam uh, the ten tribes that, to be ahead of him. Verse 32. First Kings 11 and 32. But he shall have one tribe for my servant's sakes, uh, servant David's sake. And for Jerusalem's sake, the city which I have chosen out of the, all the tribes of Israel. You know, the Heavenly Father had chosen Judah. You know, Judah, the, the house of Judah representing the Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. You know, the, that's the, 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 the tribe slash tribes, you know, that the Heavenly Father had left for Solomon, King Solomon. I mean, this is a, a little article or more like a question area thing I found. That gives us more detailed answer. This is uh, saying, why was Israel divided into the southern kingdom and northern kingdom? And I actually wanted to focus on this part right here. And you could definitely check this website out. It's just gotquestions.org. If you pull up, if you search at that question, I'm sure it'll pop up. But, you know, this is a bit of information. This is right here. We'll start right here. The reign of David's son, Solomon, was more unrest when one of the king's servants, Jeroboam, rebelled. Jeroboam was one, was on the king's errand when he met the prophet Ahijah, or, or Ahijah, you know, not sure how to pronounce that properly, but I'll go with the, uh, uh, Ahijah, who told him that the Most High was going to give him authority over, the ten, over 10 of the 12 tribes of Israel. The Most High's reason for the, the division of the kingdom was in definitive because they have forsaken me. And have not walked in my ways. However, the Most High promised that David's dynasty would continue, albeit over a much smaller kingdom, for the sake of the Most High's covenant with David and for the sake of Jerusalem, the Most High's chosen city. When Solomon learned of the prophecy, he sought to kill Jeroboam, who fled to Egypt for sanctuary. 1 Kings 11 26 40. You know, and it, was, it had a lot to do with King Solomon wanting to uh, uh, follow false gods. You know, the, all of our people as a whole, you know, never did things right. You know, that's why we needed Yahweh Shai. And that's why Yahweh Shai did come and live. And he and we're waiting for his return. You know, that's why we, we go out there and teach, you know. And the sincere brothers out there teaching, you know. We do that for a purpose. We don't simply do that just to waste our time and, you know, look like uh, somebody on this side. No. We, we, we are putting away our, our lives in, in the hopes that Yahweh Baha Shem Yahweh Shai shall come and uh, save us in these last days. So I'm going to continue. After Solomon's death, his son Re 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 Rehoboam, Salaki if I mispronounce that, Rehoboam, was set to become the next king. Jeroboam returned from Egypt and led a group of people to confront Re Rehoboam with a demand for a lighter tax burden. When Rehoboam refused the demand, ten of the tribes rejected Rehoboam and David's dynasty. First Kings 12 and 16, and Ahijah prophes Ahijah's prophecy was fulfilled. Only Judah and Benjamin remained loyal to the king, to King Rehoboam. The northern tribes crowned Jeroboam as their king. Rehoboam plan made plans to mount an assault on the re rebel tribes, but the Lord prevented him from taking that action. Meanwhile, Jeroboam further consolidated his power by institution, instituting a form of calf worship unique to his kingdom and declaring that pilgrim, 
pilgrimage to Jerusalem were unnecessary. Thus the people of the northern tribes would have no contact with the tribes of Ju Judah and Benjamin, you know, as well as Levi. So Israel was, has been in rebellion against the house of David to this day. The northern kingdom is called Israel, or sometimes Ephraim, in the scripture. In scripture, and the southern kingdom is called Judah. From the divine viewpoint, the the division was a judgment on not keeping the, the most high commandments, specifically the commandments prohibiting <coughs> idolatry. From a human viewpoint, the division was the result of tribal discord and political unrest. The principle is that sin brings division. There's precepts to back that up. The good news is that the Most High and His mercy was promised the reuniting of the Northern and Southern kingdoms. You know, the so-called Negro, Latino, and Native American will be together once again. He will raise a banner for the nations and gather the exiles of Israel. You know, uh, I believe Ezekiel 37 even goes into this. You know, the ban the, we, we, we have that sign, you know, the banner for our nation, the nations, and gather the exiles of Israel. He will assemble the scattered people of Judah from the four quarters of the earth. Ephraim's jealousy will vanish and Judah's enemies will be destroyed. Ephraim will not be jealous of Judah, nor Judas, Judah hostile toward Ephraim. Isaiah 11, verse 12 through 13. When the Prince of Peace, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, reigns in his millennial kingdom, all hostility, jealousy, and conflict among the tribes will be put to rest. And that's how you know these, these small hats, these people that are in Israel today, are not the chosen people. You know, this hasn't happened yet. This, this, this prophecy will be fulfilled when Yahweh Shai returns. But you see it slowly starting to unfold. You know, our people are starting to wake up. Our people are starting to receive the true names. Our people are starting to actually uh, come together and, and move forward righteously. You know, but two-thirds of our people will not understand here in America. You know, not all of the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are going to truly understand until, they, until they're in the kingdom. You know, because a lot of them will have to see death. So, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I would like to close out by saying, Call Halayim la Yahawa, Bahashem Yahawa Shai, Bahashem Akakwadash. Double honors unto the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Shalom to the hopeful elect.